<clears throat> Time of the Cuckoo Clock by Aurelia Bloomer To say that Jason Myers knew what he wanted in life, to even state that he had a goal would be somewhat of a lie. Looking back at his life, he could not seem to find one along the way. For it seemed that school prepared him for, to be frank, not a damn thing. He was no, not particularly adept in math, he found little pleasure in social studies, art was passing in the background of his mind as a career, and English seemed like a subject he would never be qualified for in the slightest. He could try something in labor, but what good would that do him when he was 50, and couldn't lift a sandbag without hurting himself? So here he was, mid-twenties, job hunting for something he doesn't know he wants yet. Here he was again, parked on the street outside where his mother, Martha Myers, lives, coming for his monthly visit. It had become a tradition of sorts, these visits. After his dad died, he felt that, as an only child, it was his responsibility to check on her, offer her some form of friendship and solidarity that she needed. But as of late, she had become a sort of voice in his ear, constantly telling him what he should be doing, how to act, where he might be successful, and what he should be aspiring to be. This put a damper on his visits because now he felt an obligation to bring her some form of a job or a hobby he had attained since last visiting her, but he never could. He could never look her in the eye and tell her that nothing gave him joy, that nothing he could do would be his passion either. Oftentimes he imagined what it would be like to have a job that brought him joy. He imagined that he would wake up at 8 in the morning, realize that he was to go to work, and a smile would creep upon his face. He would get dressed, eat breakfast, and then leave his home, all in a blissful silence that was, he supposed, longing. He would imagine being at work throughout the day, pleased that he had found it, his purpose. He imagined many times that he would go home, ready to start the next day. He imagined that this was how other people, the ones that had found their purpose, felt. But the problem, problem with his imagining, among many, was that the job was a hazy mess that he could never decipher. Not even his imagining could help him decide a career path. Walking up the path to her home, Jason could hear the faint footfalls of his mother coming to the door accompanied by the cuckoo clock that stood guard on the adjacent wall of the entrance. He had always felt odd about that clock, for it was given to his mother as a gift, and his mother, not being one for nostalgia, found that its old-fashioned task of winding by means of pulling weighted cords from the bottom was rather inconvenient and time-consuming. Most times, when he had lived with his mother, he found the weights at the bottom of the clock laying on the ground because they had, been not, they had not been pulled up the previous day. Even now, when she had lived at home, with nothing more to do than sit at her computer or, put, or pet her dog, she still couldn't bring herself to pull the weights back up so that the clock may finally move its arms engage the gears within, and thrust out the little bird hidden inside. Hello, darling. How was the drive? Martha, holding the door open, greeted in her usual chipper voice that she started every visit with. Once, a time, once upon a time, she was very beautiful, but in her later years she sought to contain that fleeting presence of youth she, she had, but hadn't seemed to grasp it fully. Her hair was graying where the dyed parts grew out, and she had developed something of a turkey gizzard upon her neck. Hi, Mom. The drive was fine, same as always. How's your week been? Jason greeted in his customary manner and questioned as well. From his position on the step, he could see the living room that was cleaned and dusted, the blinds had been opened to let sunlight in, and the weights of the cuckoo clock had reached the li a little over halfway down the wall. Martha tutted and opened the door wider for Jason to enter. Her tut usually meant one of two things. Either she had some hot new gossip on her neighbor she had to share with as many people as possible, or it was an unbearably slow week, which was becoming normal for her. Moving into the house itself, he sat, on, he sat down on the armchair that was adjacent to a longer couch his mother usually occupied. Do you remember Peter, the boy a couple houses down that used to play with you? She looked at him expect expectantly. Jason vaguely remembered Peter and that he hated when he would come over because Peter was controlling and got him into trouble many times. So he nodded his head yes, hoping she wouldn't ask if he knew anything more. Well, I hear that he's getting married, move out to California for it even. Seems to have found a pretty nifty job over there too. Wasn't he about two years younger than you? It had begun already, the prodding and soon-to-be comparison between Peter and himself. It became less subtle every visit, and now it seemed she was just beating a dead horse. 
for she knew that Peter was two years younger than him, had gone to college, graduated with top marks, and found a girl to fall in love with there. Yes, just about, but that's great for him. I always thought he'd be happy somewhere out of state. Jason lied. The only way he could possibly be happy in this situation was because Peter was now in California, far enough away from him where he didn't have to worry about bumping into him anywhere. Nevertheless, Jason could see where his mother was going with this conversation already, skipping over the niceties and small talk in favor of prying more into his life. I hear she's pretty nice too, his fiance. Speaking of which, how is that girl you were talking to? Jane, was it? Maybe she'd like to come over sometime. Martha was now in the kitchen, grabbing a glass for water, trying to make the subject breach more natural than it was. Jason moved to the kitchen bar stool in favor of grabbing anything to prolong the answer he was to give. Prolong, but not deny. That was always how it seemed to go. Probably not this one, Mom. She said something about bad timing or whatever and broke it off. He didn't want to look her in the eyes, because he knew that if he did, he would find a mix of pity and disappointment that he had found so many other times he told her bad news. He tried, he tried his best to brush it off and change the subject in favor of something about her. So how was that pottery class you were taking at the center? It sounded fun the last time you told me about it. J judging from her stare that now penetrated his soul, he was not completely successful in flipping the switch. It's fun, but too messy for me. I would come home and there would be clay everywhere. She grinned to herself and darted her eyes towards him. What about you? Have you taken any classes? Maybe got a job offer from somewhere? What happened to that accounting place? If Jason were timing these visits, this one would hold the record of how little time Martha had waited to ask him these things. From the kitchen, through the silent breaks in their speech, he could hear the ticking of the clock and could imagine how slowly the hands had been moving over the wooden face. If he were to look upon the meticulously carved facade with its neat numbers in a ring, and the locked hands dancing in their familiar circle, it would reveal to him that he had only been there in the house for ten minutes. No, Mom, nothing new. I don't think I would have been happy at that place, though, what with all its rules and numbers and such. No, I think something outside of that would be good for me. When he says that, he can't, cannot tell who he is lying to. It was a lie meant for his mother, but if, it were to, but if he were to reflect upon the statement, it seemed all of it was a farce, something to give him more time to think of something he could try and be happy with. There was no time left. I wish you would take something up. I know that place offered you a position. The least you could do is try it out for a while, long enough to get a paycheck or two at least. I hear it's decent money. It would certainly be less stressful on me, what with helping you out and all. Her tone was earnest, and her gaze upon him had turned as sharp as a knife. Jason couldn't help but think how funny it was for her to turn so quickly into the authority figure he knew growing up, when just seconds ago they were talking like old schoolmates catching up on each other's lives. That's the thing, though. I'm not trying to find my next paycheck or my next meal, Mom. I'm trying to find something I can stick with and build upon. I just need some time to find it, is all. He glanced at Martha from under his eyelashes to try and gauge if she was truly hearing him. She sat at the table now, shoulders hunched, looking into her water glass like it was a crystal ball that was to tell her what the future held for her son. And not liking what the glass had to offer her, she looked back at Jason, who still sat on the bar stool and sighed. You know, I had so many jobs that I hated. I stuck with them for as long as I could, though, because I knew that if I didn't, I wouldn't have had any security in finding my next job. That's what you've got to understand, Jason. Until you start something, you won't be able to go to the next thing that comes along. She paused in her speech to consider her next words. You need a foot in the door, even if it's at a place you don't feel will take you anywhere. That's just how life works. Jason took a pause before answering her. Okay, Mom. On Monday, I'll figure it out. It was all he could manage to say. He knew that whatever he had to say wouldn't get through no matter how he phrased it. That was the downfall of their little visits. Martha was headstrong and had passed down the trait to Jason, and the two together could never seem to come to terms with what the other had said, so it hung in the air like a fog. But this was one subject that Jason felt he had little 
knowledge on, and experience in to argue with her. So he let it be. The silence that followed was deep, only accompanied with the ticking of the clock, and when it suddenly made no more sound, he knew that his time was up. Well, as always, I love talking with you, but I should get going. Getting up, Jason strolled to the clock to wind it as he always did before leaving the house. It was five minutes behind, but he did not bother to correct it, for it would be off again when the weights hit the floor once more. Martha and Jason exchanged hugs and farewells, and Jason made his way down the path to his car. The way home was smooth, but his mind was a storm. He felt that what his mother had said was unfair, for in the past she had always told him that she hated every job she had, and if she had the chance to leave them she would have. For her to lecture him seemed unfair in Jason's mind, because he did not want to be like her. He had no plans in wasting his time at a dead-end job that would take him no further in developing a passion. But that made him ponder what his true plan was. To be frank, he hadn't a clue. Fate, it seemed, had not bothered to present herself to him in all his years of searching, and would not now. So it seemed, Jason thought, that he might just have to take fate by the hand and do something that was uncharacteristic of himself, something drastic that would jar the very nature of himself and bring about the subject of his search. Making this plan, he had to think in terms of what he wouldn't do normally, and in answering this question, he came to the thing that was most lacking in his life, travel. In travel came adventure, and in his mind, since the two things often came as a package, adventure might be what he lacked the most in his life, and so, perhaps, it could loosen the passion that hid itself inside him. Upon his discovery, Jason made a deal with himself. When he arrived at his home, he would look for a means to travel the longest distance in time with the money that his mother ga gave him as soon as possible. This would be his catalyst into discovery, Jason thought and it gave him such warm, warm tingles in his heart that he could not help but feel like this was fate presenting herself at last.